Back to ringside with Al Bernstein and Pedro Fernandez as we already see Everett Bigfoot Martin in the ring. This is a man, as we look at Everett Martin, who is got the journeyman tag clearly labeled on his forehead <laughs> and they never get it away. But he's a guy that as a cruiserweight was quite good, you, and as a heavyweight still has enough to do things like knock down a Michael Moore. Yes. And uh, when you face guys like this, clearly they are tune-up bouts of sorts, but you have to be careful of them because they can embarrass you. He embarrassed Michael Moore. Yes. And, and, and these days, isn't it true, your marketability is as important as your wins? Without question. Everett feels very strongly that uh, maybe the, the, the fates of boxing owe him one. He feels he was ripped off up there in Auburn Hills uh, with his fight with Back Michael Moore and uh, feels very strongly that uh, he's due a break, as his record might uh, indicate. Uh, as we mentioned, it's 17 and 13, nothing to take home to the Boxing Hall of Fame, but certainly has been in with the best out there, George Foreman, Dwight Muhammad Kawi. You mentioned Michael Moore, so certainly a, a gentleman to, to take pretty seriously. Ever Bigfoot Martin, and it's not how, if you win these days, Al, as you mentioned, you better look good doing it to turn up the heat uh, so people start clamoring for you to fight for the heavyweight championship, and that's Riddick Bowe's challenge tonight. Yeah, and as he makes his way into this arena, Riddick Bowe has been kind of the, the man in waiting, if you will. Now, he did have a chance to fight Evander Holyfield. Six million dollars was on the table, though they claim it was not long enough for them to consider. But uh, in effect, it was a rejection. He feels, I guess, at that point, they either felt like he should get more or didn't, weren't quick enough in saying yes. Whatever the case, he it looks like we'll get a shot at Holyfield sometime during the course of this year, assuming Holyfield is still champion after the Holmes fight, of course. They call him Big Daddy. He's a big one, 6'5", 235. And those out there in the know feel he is maybe the most physically gifted man in the heavyweight division. And I'll tell you another thing, he always has an ace in the hole in his corner in the form of the legendary Hall of Fame trainer, Eddie Futch, who's been uh, involved in boxing for some 55 years. And when you look at the uh, tail of the there, you see the records of these two uh, boxers, and uh, you can see Riddick Bowe is perfect as a pro. Riddick Bowe 29-0, and, and we are pretty much set and ready for the introductions of this 10-round heavyweight tussle. We're going to send you up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introduction. Well, fans, here we go. This bout coming your way features the big men of the sport, heavyweights in action in this 10-round special attraction. First, introducing the judges appointed at ringside, we have Chuck Jumper, Al Siciliano, Paul Smith, and the referee in charge will be giving instructions, Toby Gibson. Well, fans, introducing to you first on my left. He is fighting out of the red corner. He entered the ring wearing blue trunks and hailing from Houston, Texas. He weighed in at 229 pounds with a record of 17 wins, 13 losses, one draw. He has eight wins by way of knockout. Welcome a fighter they call Everett, Bigfoot Martin. And his opponent across the ring. On my right, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10-round heavyweight special attraction. He is wearing white trunks with red trim and fighting out of Brooklyn, New York. He weighed in at 235 pounds with an outstanding record of 29 wins, no losses, 25 wins by way of knockout. He is the WBC Continental America's champion, ranked the number two heavyweight contender in the world by the WBC, introducing the undefeated Riddick Bowe. Okay, gentlemen, I've given you both your instructions in your respective dressing rooms. I want you to obey my commands at all times. Eddie, you're going to be the chief second. Who's the chief second in this corner? You're the chief second? Okay, gentlemen, in the event of a mouthpiece, I, I'm going to try to toss to your corner. Obey my commands at all times. Good luck to both of you. Well, the tail of tape on this one, quite intriguing, because to say that Riddick Bowe has a height and reach advantage <laughs> is the understatement of the decade, and of course he has a youth advantage as well, and uh, Everett Martin uh, almost the same weight, but that isn't necessarily good for him since he's 5'11". 
and hard to believe, but he actually started his career in the middleweight division. So he's eaten his way through the middleweight, super middleweight, light heavyweight, cruiserweight, and he's into the heavyweights. Everett Bigfoot Martin, Riddick Big Daddy Bo, who has uh, not been too uh, busy about for going long into fights. First, second, third round knockouts the past year. He says he wants some work tonight, Al. Yeah, and, and Everett Martin is likely to give him a little bit more. Elijah Tillery and Conroy Nelson, he fought Tillery show, twice, won that bizarre situation where Tillery <laughs> that was... was kickboxing, wasn't it? Oh, Tillery was disqualified. <laughs> and uh, some other things happening during the course of that match that didn't do boxing any good. Fighters being dragged out of the ring, etc. And, of course, his very good win over Bruce Seldon, which was uh, a big win for him. The only fight in which people have been less than um, excited about Riddick Bowe's performance was the 10-round win over Tony Tubbs, in which uh, he did not perform as well as I think he would like. And to his credit, Tubbs fought very well. There has been a question about his heart, his dedication. But uh, Eddie Futch has been uh, stated numerous times that he uh, feels very strong about this gentleman. And this is probably Eddie's last hurrah with a, a very serious contender at age 79. Oh. Look at the power. He's yeah. got Martin hurt already. The one thing you can... Martin landing a good hook, but he is not the puncher, I don't think, that you have to be to hurt Riddick Bowe. There are the two heavyweights, young heavyweights around that I think have the punching power to knock people out with one punch. Well, Tommy Morrison does too, even though he's got some other deficiencies he's working on, would be Bo and Lennox Lewis. What are your, what are your thoughts on, on a fight, Al, that you, you want some work, you hurt a guy, and you back off to get the work, and then you, you, you take you know you take a test that this guy might come on like uh, Martin's trying to. Well, I'll tell you what, in this match, what's happening is Bo is going after him, but Bigfoot Martin is landing some pretty good counter punches, some left hooks. Now, obviously, Bo feels he can do that against him because Martin's not a big puncher. Really, Bo's really not the kind of guy that I think is going to deliberately pace himself and get a lot of rounds. I just don't. I think right. he's a puncher. A boxer puncher, to be sure, but a man with such power that he almost has to throw those punches hard. And I think he should. Because if he's going to beat the likes of a Holyfield, he's going to do it with power. He's a big man, 6'5", weighed in today at 235. And uh, the most gifted man in the heavyweight division is from the talent standpoint many people feel and as Al mentioned at the top of the show biding his time marking time uh, waiting for his shot we should mention in addition to Van der Holyfield yeah. who's still champion yeah. big right hand by Everett snaps back the head of Riddick Bowe Mike got his attention there you can almost feel that Bowe knows Martin isn't going to hurt him too badly or at least he thinks that so he's taking some punches he might not otherwise take standing with his hands very low you know, the one thing that gets underestimated by Bo is his hand speed, which is pretty good. Silver medalist in the 88 Olympics, big right hand. Really pulls the trigger in that right hand quite well. First round is over. We look at Everett Bigfoot Martin. Uh, Tim Goodall is the man working at corner, along with Willie Savannah is the, uh, is the gut man. Michael Moore hits real hard, Al, and, and he took some huge shots from Michael and uh, stood the test, and you seem very strong about Riddick's just a bigger puncher than Michael. Yeah, I think Riddick Bowe, as we take a look at some of his power, is a more powerful puncher than Michael Moore. He is very much good right hand and the uppercut. Nice combinations by Bo. And there's something that does set him apart. He throws lots of combinations. He hits with real legitimate heavyweight power. And Everett Martin was able to get the counter left hand in. That one slapped, mm -hmm. and he took a right for his trouble. But <laughs> you can see the left hand is open to Martin if he can crank it up in the right way. Another factor in this fight with a seven-inch height advantage is mere leverage. When Riddick Bowe starts hitting down on people, it's you have the gravitational pull plus his punching power. <laughs> it's unfair. True. Let's write our congressman about it, shall we? <laughs> That'll get things moving, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Assuming they're not writing any checks. Did I say that? No. Oh, oh my God. Thank God this is pay-per-view. <laughs> Round number two, scheduled 10 rounder. Riddick Big Daddy Bo, Everett Bigfoot Martin, two big men in the first round. Riddick Bo looked very, very sharp. Everett landed a couple legitimate shots to, to hang in there. But certainly, when it comes to the talent quota, certainly has to lean heavily in the favor of the 29-0 number one ranked heavyweight, Riddick Bo. Riddick Lamont Bowen right in. Now, if Martin is to do good, some good for himself in this match, I think the inside is where he ought to be. He's shorter, he's got... There, oh. and that's what I mean. <laughs> that is where he needs to be. If he can stay off Bo's chest, he can do some good. 
Eddie Fletch feels that Bo is merely tapping his potential, about at 50% potential, uh, and hoping uh, to corral a world title shot for him by the end of the year. He and Rock Newman, who can be rather pushy as well. The right hand yes. is there. <laughs> it can be. Yeah. Now here's Martin on the inside, mm -hmm. and you can see he can get some things done there. Whether it's enough to win this match is another question. But if you keep him in this, he's neutralizing the power of Bo at that point. Just smothering him. In round two. And Toby Gibson, a good and fair-minded referee, will not make it harder on uh, Martin on the inside. He holds a lot, he will call it, but he won't, he won't start penalizing him in two seconds for it. 25 of the 29 wins by Riddick Bo have ended by way of KO including his, his last four fights. That is a no-no, though. Everett Martin cannot oh, lunge in because Bo will hit him with the uppercut, <laughs> of which he has a very good one. There are a lot of uh, very talented heavyweights out there and all milling around in the top ten. You might mention Michael Moore, Ray Mercer, Razor Ruddick, Lennox Lewis. They're all out there. Ruddick, kind of the forgotten man mm. in the mix. Big shots by Riddick Bow, but the Bigfoot just staying right in his face. He's a tough guy. And see, he gets his little counter shots in. If he gives Bow punching him, though, of course, he's got a huge problem. Nice jab by Riddick Bow, getting the crowd into it here. And the aforementioned Pierre Coulter, who we mentioned at the beginning of the show, who Bo will likely face next, had to go 10 before dispatching uh, every Bigfoot mark. George Foreman had to go 10 with, with the Bigfoot. Pierre and, Coulter uh, fought him in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Not exactly a hot bet of boxing. Round two in the books, and the Bigfoot still right there. Riddick Bowe looking to up his professional mark to 30 and 0, a silver medalist in the 1988 oh, Olympics, fast, yeah. right. Eddie oh, Futch. He's only in there. So, he's, so, he's so close that you can't do anything with the uppercuts on the inside. So right. he, 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 Good advice from Eddie Futch, and this is what he meant. You're so close you can't do anything with the uppercut, and that's exactly what that showed. Martin landing his right hand as the uppercut misses by Bowe. And here is Riddick Bowe with a double left hook. The first one low, but the second one gets there very legally and lands as a good shot to the head. What a contrast in styles, Al. Emil Griffith slapping, slapping, yelling in our first fight, and then you have the soft-spoken Papa Smurf, Eddie Futch, calmly giving directions, which they want Riddick Bowe better listen to. Round number three, scheduled 10 rounder in the sky blue trunks is Everett Bigfoot Martin. North Carolina fans will appreciate that. And white with red is Riddick Bow. Heavily favored, I might add. And Everett's not even a Tar Heel, is he? No. no. He's from Houston, Texas. Always been down there. That's a cougar, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Wild story, Eddie Futch. Actually, Riddick Bow recruited him. I want you to train me. And Eddie said, you got to show me that you want it. And uh, so far, Riddick Bo has done that. Well, I'm sure Riddick Bo's sick of hearing about it. But, you know, the buzz when he turned pro that was that he just quit against Lennox Lewis, that he didn't feel like he could win that fight. And that's why Eddie Futch, I think, felt he wanted to be shown by Riddick Bo that he could do it. And certainly, Bo has performed extremely well as a pro and worked hard. Would you be safe to assume, assume that Riddick Bo has come a, a lot farther than Lennox Lewis since August of 88? Well, yes and no, but he may have had farther to come. Mm -hmm. Lewis has not fought badly. Um, and I think both of them have improved their skill level. There's no question. Bo possibly a little bit more. Let's go. No more boxing out here. Come on. They're both punchers, and should they meet in the ring again, somebody will go. <laughs> Riddick Bo on the uh, attack here in round number three. Pace slowing down just a little bit. Riddick Bo staying outside, as Eddie Futch had uh, instructed between rounds two and three. Do your damage from outside. Do not get caught up in those uh, uptight clinches. That's where the Bigfoot has done his most damage midway through round number three, and the pupil has listened quite well, and with good reason. Now, Riddick Bo has... And now here, Toby Gibson is letting them fight on the inside. He says, box your way out if you have to. And now he's giving warnings, not making it impossible. That's fair refereeing. Not making it impossible for Martin to fight on the inside, yet not penalizing Bo if Martin should start holding a lot. 
fine line there so far. Toby Gibson's done a very, very commendable job. He's good at that. That's one part of his refereeing that's really excellent. Body shot to a not real hard body, we might add. No, no, not Let him go. And Bo is a good body puncher, though some maybe feel like he doesn't do enough of it. Certainly, if you had to construct a boxer, you might want to take a look at Reddick Bo. Size, speed, strength. For a heavyweight. Good no. left hook. There's that counter no. left from Martin. And you know, that's part of, uh, as they look at these tapes and he and Eddie Fudge, you know, look at them carefully. They won't like that. They don't, won't like the idea that that counter left was getting in because there's, there's a guy out there and the counter right. There's a guy out there named Holyfield who has an excellent counter left hook and they don't want that to land on the head of Riddick Bowe. And Holyfield's uh, scheduled for uh, the June 19th showdown with the former heavyweight champ, Larry Holmes. As things start to shake down a little bit in the heavyweight division. A lot of talent there. We'd like to see some more uh, important matchups. Not, not again, huh? Yeah. That's what started the Elijah <laughs> Tillery problem. Yeah, and that turned into the, the kickboxing uh, event of the year. Rock Newman got an assist in that one. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. Got an assist from the commission as well. Keep working that stick. You've got plenty of time. Just be patient. We are at the Riviera Hotel and Casino. Humile and Al Bernstein, Pedro Fernandez ringside as we, we bring you all the action. Check in on the challenger for the quest for glory. That is Donnie Golden Boy Lalonde as he gets taped up by Ralph Citro. Man who puts out the most informative boxing yeah, book you ever true. want to look at. More than you ever need <laughs> yeah. to know. You'll ever need, but it's always there. There's the matchup. It's our main event, the quest for glory. Bobby Chaz, Donnie, Golden Boy, Lalonde, scheduled for 12 rounds. It's for the WBA Cruiserweight Championship, and the crowd is waiting in anticipation of that. And, of course, they're waiting for the big daddy to add another notch to his belt, although every Bigfoot, Bigfoot Martin has some other ideas. Well, they forgot to put his mouthpiece in. Really? Just a minor detail. Small point. <laughs> in the old days, they would not have allowed that to take place. The boxer would have had to go out without his mouthpiece, which... That's a good, good rule change. And you stay away from the salty foods for about a month. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. We are in round number four. This is scheduled for 10 rounder, a 10 rounder, and uh, Everett Bigfoot Martin showing a lot of aggression at the end of round number three and trying to keep up the heat here in round number four. He's doing some nice body work. And this is what he wants. Smother Riddick Bow and at least keep yourself in the fight because you're not going to get knocked out if you can't hit you with those big bombs. You may not win, but you're going to give a representative performance. And right around this point now, Riddick Bow has landed some fairly big shots against Martin, and Martin is not going anywhere. Keep up, Riddick. And that can be frustrating. Most people, after about two or three rounds of the pressure from Riddick Bowes, decide to look for a, a place to hide. But uh, Bigfoot's been in with some big boys, as we mentioned, George Foreman, Kyle Wee, and Michael Moore most recently, and always is right there in the face. I did the Johnny Deploy fight back in 88, and uh, Deploy hit him with some big shots. I finally took him out in, in the, I think it was the seventh or eighth round, and it was like face down. So Everett doesn't uh, go down easily. Probably Everett's biggest win was over Bert Cooper when they were both two. Oh, big hook. He, and he got some leverage into that. And I think Riddick Bowe is... Uh, he was... I yeah. think he was a little shook by yeah. that punch. Hard to tell, of yeah. course, but... Could be one of those gut check, check times that uh, become important for Riddick Bowe. Well, Everett Martin did not come here to lay down. You can see that. He did not come here to be another statistic and a notch in Riddick Bowe's belt. And Bo's having Stop a hard time landing that big right hand of his. Everett Martin, after a very strong start by Riddick Bo in the first round, in the second round, things started to go a little more his way, and he's fought pretty much straight up. But we're in round number four, and Riddick Bo, who is looking for some work, is, is getting that work. Maybe would like to end the night, but uh, right now does not look like he's ready to do that. Stop punching. Martin is doing a very good job of avoiding the bow right hand. And right now, Riddick, which he didn't do earlier, is getting into a little bit too much of a one-dimensional attack. And against a veteran like Martin, who is a fairly good defensive fighter, you can't do that. Inside 20 seconds in round number four. And this might be a round that Everett Martin has won. Maybe check in with uh, Pedro on that to see how the scorecards are coming along. He is throwing good shots. 
the jab of Bo, and that's been a, a good weapon all through his career. With an 82-inch reach, uh, certainly one of the longest reaches in the, the division. the Boo Birds uh, coming into life here at the Riviera Hotel and Casino. Let it, uh, anything excites you. Just keep not. working. Keep doing your thing. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing your thing. Keep that popping. Pop in it. We're going to take a look at uh, Pedro Fernandez's um, scorecard through four rounds. Right. Many people didn't think we'd get that deep in a fight, but Pedro's keeping score. Pedro? Well, I've got it at the 40 to 37 scoring the fourth round even. I thought Bigfoot Martin had some moments in that round. I think Big Daddy Bo is not using the double jab. He's not using his reach. He's not using the six foot five inches of height that God gave him. He's fighting every Bigfoot Martin's fight. Now, I'm not saying he'll lose this fight, but he's making the fight harder for himself than it has to be. We take a look at the corner. Okay. Ralph Citro and Eddie Futch. Uh, we are ready for round number five. It's Humalay and Al Bernstein, Pedro Fernandez are ringside. Riddick Bowe came to Las Vegas looking for some fighting, and he's gotten it more than he maybe bargained for. There What's becomes a confidence thing here, too, with Bigfoot. Don't you feel that uh, he is far more confident, a little more aggressive than he was early in the fight, Al? Yeah, and it's not... The, the thing he's doing is he's searching for things that will work for him, and he's, he's found that when he gets on the inside, he can work the body and the head like that. And he certainly has found that left hook. Now, every Bigfoot Martin doesn't have the greatest left hook in the world. He slaps it a little bit, but it's fairly quick, and it's getting there against Bo. Whenever Bo throws that right hand. Big combination by Riddick Bo. Looks like he is uh, trying to turn up the heat here. Now, how Everett Martin reacts to that right hand is going to be significant. Because that was a major league right hand by Bo. As good as he can throw. We'll see if it hurt Martin. Some great action here in round number five. Bo throwing some nice combinations and Everett just throwing Bigfoot Martin throwing just enough to keep Bo from just winging away. And now Bo using the jab very effectively and look, it's setting up the right hand. Now now that right hand is landing. Ready Bo turning the tide here in round number five. Almost one south border. That was in South Carolina. <laughs> Martin is forgetting a little bit, you, uh, when Bo missed the right hand, he's forgetting to come with that left hook or not able to do it. You made a good point earlier that you think Riddick Bo goes a little too much to the head, and uh, it's almost like that's the only part of the body he's gone to this hey, round. No. And he's a very good body puncher, and when he's effective, he does throw more downstairs, but once in a while, nobody's perfect, obviously, <laughs> once in a while he'll he'll just not do that. He's only 24 years of age as Riddick Bo, and he'll be 25 later this year. And certainly a man at that size and weight. Ranked in the top five by all the governing bodies in the heavyweight division, waiting his turn. Nice hooks on the inside by Martin. He is cranking up that punch. He doesn't have huge power in it. Nice, but Bo shows you his hook as well. But if, it, if they stay on the inside and it's a battle of hooks, Everett Martin can hang in this fight. Nice uppercut by Riddick Bow in round number five. Another good uppercut. Goes the body nicely. You know what this bout is trying to remind me of? Lennox Lewis against Levi Phillips. And Lennox could not put him out. Oh, look. Flip. Riddick, get your glove taped. Riddick. Riddick Bow. Get your glove taped. The tape on his, I believe it's his right glove. Or? Get that glove taped. There's a cut over the left eye of, of Everett Bigfoot Martin. Is that what they're attending to? Yeah. I wonder if that happened because the glove uh, had some cage loose. You have a problem saying that? That's it. That's it for you. Okay, that's it. Never mind the glove. That is Never going mind. to be a... Never mind. Let's go. They're going to call this fight that's off. It. Because of the cut. Over the that, left. Is, that, must... that is a bad cut. Now, we haven't got a chance to take a perfect look at it. But Dr. Homansky asked him if he's having trouble seeing, and I guess Martin must have said yes, and he said that's enough. Riddick Big Daddy Bo getting carried away, literally, by his opponents. And uh, we did not see that, and we will try to pick it up on replay for you, but we got about, about a minute and a half to go in round number five, and a cut over, I believe it was the right eye of Everett Bigfoot Martin, and the left eye, according to Pedro Fernandez, and it is a left eye, right on his eye lit, and that those are impossible to stop. That cut was, uh, you, that's almost an impossible cut to stop right there, yeah. 
Big Top Rocky, I wanted to go a couple more rounds, but he has a fight. There it is. There's a tight shot of the cut over the left eyelid of Everett Bigfoot Martin. And a gentleman who certainly was putting on a good display of boxing, giving Riddick Bow a very, very tough night of it. These things do happen. All right, we're going to take a look at the right hand. And hey, yeah, what was the score? It was, there it is, the, possibly the lacing doing the cut over the right eye. There's a nice replay. And the, quickly the ringside doctor came in and called it quits. We're going to be sending it up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official time of that stoppage. as they take the clothes off of Everett Bigfoot Martin. A very, very credible performance by him and a disappointing cut in the fifth round. There's Riddick Big Daddy Bo. He'll up his mark to 30-0. and 0. And uh, we'll see what's on his KO calendar as we check in with Al Bernstein up in the ring in just a second. Still to come, of course, our main event. That is the WBA Cruiserweight title. That is the quest for glory. Bobby Chez and Donnie Golden Boy Lalonde. It is a scheduled 12 rounder. We are back at the Riv in style. The first time World Championship Boxing returns here in some six years. Lennox. Rock Newman saying something about Lennox Lewis, maybe. That would be an intriguing matchup. Riddick Big Daddy Bo. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, 28 seconds in round number five. The referee in charge, Toby Gibson, stops the contest on advice to the ringside physician, Dr. Flip Homansky. The winner by way of technical knockout, he is still undefeated, Riddick Bo. Riddick, big daddy Bo, posting win number 3-0, 30 and 0. Mark that 26 KOs. And now Riddick Bowe will look ahead to further developments in his career, along with Rock Newman and Eddie Futz for the rest of the summer, as he is currently ranked in everybody's top three, IBF, WBA, and WBC. And many people feel that uh, he will be next in line after Evander Holyfield and or Larry Holmes get together on June 19th in Las Vegas. So five rounds of action, and Riddick Bowe post the win. We're going to check in with Al Bernstein in just a second as he, as he drags the 235-pound uh, bow over there. Let's check in with Al Bernstein with the winner, Riddick Bow. Well, Riddick Bow notches yet another win in his professional career, stays undefeated, and every Bigfoot Martin was a tough dude, wasn't he? He matched up with Big Daddy, and uh, one of us had to go, and you knew it wasn't going to be me. Um, a lot of people say this guy isn't tough and what have you. That's a lot of crap. I mean, I hit this guy with some monster yeah. shots. And he was still standing, and he hit me also. He did. He was able to get in some counter left hooks, which I know you probably weren't pleased about, although in this case you were able to withstand him. Did any of those have a big impact on you? Um, I guess if the fight would have, uh, you know, uh, progressed and what have you. But, um, again, you got to keep in mind, I'm, I'm in great shape, you know, mm -hmm. and you have uh, a guy like Eddie Futch in my corner, and he sees things. And he was telling me that he was going to counter yeah. the left hook, so I should have kept my, my right hand up a bit more. But, again, you got to give uh, the, um, Bigfoot a lot of credit. Now, Eddie Futch, you did tell Riddick uh, not to stand the inside, and that was where Martin was able to do his work. Right, that's true. See, uh, he's very strong, and uh, he would uh, crowd uh, Riddick against the ropes and into the corners and take away his punching room. So that's the reason why I wanted him to keep the fight in the center of the ring as much as possible. You were able to land your uppercut, which is a good punch, some, but his shortness made that difficult. Didn't Very it? much so. I really couldn't get good leverage on it. Mm -hmm. So um, that means it, it had power, but it, wasn't, it didn't have the type of power that I wanted to have. And so therefore, he was able to withstand the power. But again, I mean, I read he came to fight, and um, uh, I think guys who face him in the future, they shouldn't take him light. Now, your jab was intermittent. There were parts in the fight where it was excellent, and then some parts where it wasn't there. But Well, you got to look at it like this in this aspect. Um, Martin is a... Uh, is a veteran and he knows how to maneuver so therefore I was throwing the jab trying to keep him off bay but then I would stop and look and see what he's trying to create and again so I just kept jabbing and jabbing and jabbing then I would stop to see what he was going to do just to see what I can hit him with next right. so again I was just you know trying different things all right congratulations Riddick thanks a lot okay guys. excellent win for Riddick